Hey guys, it's Jimmy Bremner, Dr. The Boy, CTA on the Urban Trail in the 416, and uh, doing a catch up. Got power in the battery so I don't have to uh, cut you short this time. So, what I said is uh, right now I'm giving the Swiss Army SAK uh, work champ, you know, it's my uh, sort of my everyday carry right now just to see uh, how I like it. Um, make no mistake, it's a very robust knife, and by that I mean it's heavy, and it's, it's quite thick. It does have every uh, tool known to mankind on it. It does have a locking, substantial locking blade that's not serrated. You know I like the serrated blade, but this one is not, and that's not an issue for me. Uh, I'm not going to continue to open it, but it has all the typical... Swiss Army uh, tools on it. Uh, it does have a very, very good saw on it, and uh, it has an extremely nice file uh, that you can sharpen with. And it actually, on the back side, has a uh, metal saw. I'm sorry for the aircraft going over it now, but this is where they turn around to uh, to land, and so uh, we get one about every. Uh, two minutes or so and it you know it has an awl it has uh, which I use I use an awl actually more than the main blade I use it for everything it's a great uh, tool to have it's got your uh, you know your wine opener bottle opener can opener you know wire stripper uh, all of those things the fine eyeglass screwdriver but you know what when my eyeglasses are broken, I take them off to do the screw up. I can't see the screw, and that's uh, part of getting older. So I have uh, my elastic breakaway on it if I need it, right? But I have the retention, the elastic will break. I'm not going to break another elastic to show you that. But that's what I do. Uh, you know, it, again, with a multi tool, you're doing one or two things. You're picking. A really good knife with, um, you know, uh, not so good pliers, or really good pliers with not such a good knife. And quite frankly, in the bush, I prefer a knife over pliers. Uh, typically, as I said, when I use pliers, it's in conjunction with a screwdriver, and you're holding the nut, and twisting the bolt or the screw or what have you. I have these little uh, Knipex channel locks and they're pretty good but again they don't have the length to give you the you know the uh, you know pressure to uh, to to turn something. Right? It doesn't give you that lever advantage and mechanical advantage the, the handle being so short but in you know in, in small things that you'll get by with that said typically what I carry are just a big pair of slip joint pliers you can see these are well used and uh, they're awesome I mean, there's nothing I can't do with them and uh, they're not very expensive and uh, they, they do everything and uh you know it's not a half these are not a halfway kind of thing right so you have to remember when you're using you know your swiss army your leatherman gerber what have you they're, they're a they're kind of like a half measure they're not a they're not a real tool set yeah you can do things with them but you can't do real things with them okay they're handy little gadgets they're nice to have, they're, they're fun to play with, but beyond that, uh, they are what they are. But like I said, in the bush, I prefer a blade over uh, pliers. And if I have to carry pliers, and that's what I do, carry big pliers. So today, uh, it was raining earlier this morning. I mean, it was, it was like dark out, right? The clouds were so, uh, so overcast here. So I thought I'd do something on, I, I thought I'd set up a tarp and do something on, uh, you know, reindeer and things like that. But now the sun's out, but I have my gear with me and I just want to explain something to you. Okay, when you're selecting a poncho, 
all right there's there's different types of ponchos and you have the ponchos that are like you know they're little plastic things that you can wear on you you know they're but I prefer the 50 gallon drum liner because I can make that a rain wear if I need to and it does many other things where that little poncho dollar store poncho won't help you and then you have these kind of uh, plastic uh, type ponchos you have one of my favorite uh, Tasmanian Tiger super lightweight super robust all the seams are taped this is an excellent poncho, but what it doesn't do So your poncho is actually more than rain gear, it's part of your uh, cover element, right? So you can, you can uh, get out of, you know, the rain and the weather And what you want are the ones that break down the sides so it becomes, you know, uh, twice as big as it is to become your your uh, your tarp or your your cover element, so you can uh, get some, uh, you know, get in out of the weather. Now that said, the ones that don't split on the sides are still good ponchos, but they're limited in that you can only you can wear them. Okay where the ones that split on the side, like my uh, proprietary bolo gear poncho, I can make that into a, a sleeping bag if I need to with the poncho liner. So I can do that, you know, I can make a, a very light, you know, light weather uh, sleeping bag out of it uh, with the poncho liner and, uh, you know, I'm good to go. So, so when you pick a poncho, make sure that you're picking it you know for the job that you're doing all right now that said um, if I was going to pick a poncho I probably pick the type that split down the sides because it again it doubles uh, you know that the area of coverage for me I can get in out of the elements I can make it into a, uh, an improvised sleeping uh, bag uh, or something called a swagman roll or again a poncho liner I, I can do that so so that's what you want to do when you you're picking out a poncho and probably the last thing I'll say uh, today like my water bottles right so when I was in Italy uh, just as I was leaving at the airport I found this uh, and it's color code blue okay and this is water on the side of it it is plastic but it's a very robust uh, bottle and uh, you know it, it's a good uh, good little water bottle I would prefer it if it was made out of metal but it's not but all the same still a good water bottle so make sure with, when you're out and about that you're looking right and uh, trying to find uh, you know things that are going to help you in the environment that you're in uh, today Dexter and I are on a coyote watch because uh, they were out last night and uh, they were howling and uh, so we're just we're Dexter's got all his armor on today keeping our eyes peeled uh, looking for them uh, but they're probably when they were howling about 8 30 9 p.m. last night uh, there is probably six to eight nine of them out here and, and most of those would have been uh, pups because it is springtime but still a concern so make sure that uh, you know you're aware you're making some noise when you go through the bush as I said I always carry a walking stick uh, and uh, you know if you don't have a big a big dog with a really good recall uh, like a, you know like Dex uh, your small dogs you want to make sure they're on a leash and they can't get ahead of you. So that said, that's Jimmy Bremner and Dexter the Boy. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Dexter the Boy on the Urban Trail. I thank you always for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, check the notification and uh, 
do a like for me and comment. You know, good, bad, indifferent, I'll try and answer the comment as best as I can. And if I can't, I'll find somebody that can. Thanks again, Jimmy Bremner, C2A, Dexter the Boy, and we're out.